This thing is something special. It is insane. Right, guys, this is something pretty cool. This is the car that we actually first saw down at Simply Tuning when we were there with O'Reilly for the first time. It's a heavily modified M4 CS. Sorry, I locked it. It's just, I, I just don't want to leave it unlocked. It's a bit honky. All right, okay, let's start with the modifications on it. But what this episode is gonna be is basically us taking it for a quick test drive and then going to see how quick it is. Of course, yeah, that's what, we, that's what we're here. That's what we're here for. We're gonna see how quickly it can do zero to 100. And I would also like to see how it compares to putting its power down, particularly compared to Jimbo's M2 Comp. Yes, and I'm starting to get worried. Is it gonna be quicker than my... Michael. You're highly Ooh, modified. Because yeah. this thing is set up. It's, it's, it's kind of the polar opposite of what we do with cars. You could say that, yeah. It's, it's very well sorted, very expensive, with very expensive modifications. All right, actually, could I get you to pop the bonnet? We'll start there, because the engine stuff is kind of where it's all at with this thing. It is obviously an S55 powered F82 M4, but the owner, Connor, has done some modifications. Um, engine wise, the engine itself is absolutely stock. He is running stock turbos, but he has got catless downpipes going to a full, a Krapovic, full titanium exhaust the it's whole way back. Um, Everything is titanium. Might explain why it's so loud. Um, intercooler wise, well, charge pipe wise, he's got the MSR intakes into the turbo. He's got the MSR charge pipes into a CSF intercooler, which as you can see, has been lovely custom color painted to the car. And actually, Color, what beautiful it color. It I is, forgot what it's called. It's not Nardo Grey. It is slightly different. I think it's much actually prettier than Nardo Grey. It's lime rock grey. I think you said lime rock grey, and it has got the metallic in it, which hopefully the uh, the camera is going to pick up there. It is a lovely color, and why not? Why not do it all? Obviously, he's got the Mossman Mosselman uh, oil cooler. He's got the BMS oil filter housing. Did That's got to be ten horsepower there, isn't it? Oh, at least. Did you mention the KW coilovers? I haven't. It is fitted with KW V3s, and he has got an issue. Somebody might be able to chime in on this. The um, adaptive suspension emulators that the KWs come with don't seem to work on this car, so it does throw suspension errors every now and again. Um, moving backwards, it is fitted currently with some of the sexiest wheels. Now these are the BBS FIS forged lightweight, pretty much the coolest wheels you can get for a BMW. I think. They are ridiculous, and I didn't like. They look cool from a distance. People do go, "Oh, they look cool," but once you actually get close to them and you can see all the machine work and all the holes and I mean, they are a piece of art. And I've got a feeling they're the standard wheel, or very similar to a standard wheel that's on the F90 M5, M5. CS. Yeah, I think they are similar, but I, I reckon these might even be more extreme. Now, you may notice he has also got a set of China Brembo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> these are very expensive. <laughs> He's got the Brembo GT6 front calipers and Brembo GT4 rear calipers. Also custom painted to match the car. Hey, be in the seat. Look, from this angle here, I hadn't noticed it before. Can you see the carbon weave on the bonnet? Oh my god, it's huge. The That's... weave is like inch and a half across. From up, I hadn't, I didn't, oh, okay, so the sun's just shining on it now. You can see it pretty much everywhere, but that looks really oh, cool. Yeah. And of course, the carbon bonnet. Just having the CS hump. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, I completely forgot, has it got the intakes in the grill there. Look pretty the tough. The carbon splitter on the front is actually standard for the CS, apparently. Um, in fact, I don't think he's done many. Exterior. external modifications apart from the wheels all of the carbon on the mirrors was standard obviously the carbon lip spoiler carbon roof as well carbon roof and it has got the really cool cs taillights which i think are actually the gts taillights yeah so there's actually i was unaware of how many similarities the cs shared to the gts um like it's actually the cs is a very very serious car i, I think comparing it to the gds it's it is a later model so it's actually got a few things that the GDS doesn't, but obviously things it's missing are like the rear roll cage. But hey, it's a it's a road car, not a track car, so you save a little bit of weight there. I think Connor was saying the difference between this and this the GDS is, like you said, the roll cage. The GDS has Recaro seats. Yep. And meth injection. Yes, the oh, well, water injection. Water injection, and also a different suspension setup. The GDS comes with coilovers from the factory, Jeez. and also a different hub to offset bump steer, which you incur when you lower these things. Apparently. Yeah. Very important stuff. Uh, so the, yeah, these door cards, they, they are the GDS door cards, which are just, I think they're, I want some for my M5. 
They are lovely. Got the M4 emblems just in there. Now these are, I'm, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty confident they're just M4 standard seats. It is laden with Alcantara in all the right places. Alcantara, leather, it is a lovely dashboard. Just notice there's no center console there in the middle. It's just a piece of Alcantara. It's all good. And Alcantara steering wheel. All right, you've had a look at the car. It's pretty damn amazing. Let's go and take it out on the road and see what it's like. Do you want to hear it, Rev? I would. It's just, but we blipped it just before and I don't want to annoy the neighbors. It's that loud. We'll go and find a place where we can do some revs. Send. All right, let's go. And of course, because race car, we've got a seat belt as a door pull, but it works. Cool. And Alcantara. Don't put a plastic door handle in, but put an extra pad with Alcantara. There's not much there to be fair. <laughs> I love race cars with the road. It is just, it feels expensive. This feels really, really nice, even though it's sort of your lightweight version. Okay, now something I forgot to talk about when we were outside the engine. This car is actually tuned with an ECU Tech Tune. Um, I've just forgotten the name of the company that's tuned it, but I will put them down below. I will get the information from the owner. It's rolling around 550 rear wheel horsepower, so we're well over 600. That is on a Dyno Dynamics four wheel drive type roller dyno, so it's not a friendly dyno. Um, I mean, this thing could be kissing 700 horsepower at the crank, which is pretty mega. Um, it's going to be quicker than mine, isn't it? I, I don't know. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, which I thought was pretty cool with the ECU Tech Tune. So ECU Tech in the BMW world, one of the more expensive uh, flashes for the cars, but they normally get a few of the features before the other one. So this car was fitted with a flex fuel sensor and has been for like over a year now. It has got a flex tune, but he's also got map switching available to him, although I don't think he's got it set up. I think he's only just got a flex tune. That's right. Anyway, one thing he did show us, so to see, well, I'll get David to do it, but to see what ethanol content you've got in the car, because you've got no aftermarket gauges or JB4 or anything, all you have to do is this. Pretty clever, you just press the number eight to bring up the sport styles, and then on the steering wheel, on your Alcantara steering wheel, just hold the res button. Thing. And that actually shows the percentage of ethanol, and it's just over E60 at the moment, or around the E60 mark. And when you actually, when you hold reserve that quickly, uh, not reserve, resume on the cruise control, that actually puts the speedo into map switching, and then it's that quick to switch Change through the maps. Out. Now, I'm not saying that the MHD or the boot mode map switching is difficult, but this one seems really, really easy. And I like that you can see your ethanol content up there. Anyway, we've spoken enough. Let's get on the road and see what this thing's like to drive. It is fitted with Trofeo R front tires and Nankang AR1s on the back. Um, the owner would love to have Trofeo Rs on the back as well, but they're too bloody expensive, he said. And he gets guilt-free burnouts, apparently, with the AR1s. And but you can't blame him, they're cheap tires. They're also really, really good tires, especially for the money. And these, I think they're 295s, aren't they? 315s. No way. They're 315 rears. That is by far the biggest AR1s I've ever driven with. <laughs> All right, let's get down the road. That feels really? like my power, but it just hooked. I admittedly, I wasn't careful on the throttle, but traction control is on completely. Not even That's MDM. That's traction on. Completely. Oh my god. It started. It was um. It was driving over the road. Oh really? Holy moly! <laughs> it's so lively. Um, the power comes on at higher RPM, that's for sure. Such a naughty car. <laughs> We're not even going that quick, but it just sounds so angry. Oh Traction control is going nuts. It's flashing really? non-stop. Yeah. It's, it's a very nice setup, traction control. I cannot feel it cutting in. Wow. This nice little B-road here. The steering is so sharp. This thing... Okay, the second you start driving a little bit quicker. Well, all right. the, light, <laughs> the second you start driving quicker, everything it, is down. It doesn't settle down, but it um oh. it all makes sense. It the twitchiness doesn't become twitchy, it becomes precise. Okay, we That's, we need to turn around. Bloody road works. It's a road works. <laughs> That's a DSC fully off. Well, see what it does. Oh, it spins up. That's what it does. Oh, it's still, still spinning. spinning. Oh, okay, it feels faster Whoa. though when it finally does hook. What are 3115 AR1s even good for? 
That's really good. This car's gonna be quick. I can't wait to get the drag out and see what it does. If it can put its power down, I was pedaling it then because it just kept spinning. Oh, man. Proper M it, it does that M yeah, it so does that S55 thing, doesn't it? Cyclist. Wasn't us. Yep. E eco mode. All right, that was, that was a lot of fun actually. Um, but there is cyclists on the road. We don't want to scare him. I just, the car did not feel overwhelming at all. Yeah, you, you just gelled with that straight away, which is kind of what happened with the M2 CS. In fact, could you just give us a quick rundown on your thoughts on this chassis versus the M2 Comp? Okay, as you, if you remember that, I really liked how that M2 Comp come together. Everything that Jimbo had done to it as well, it just felt a very well sorted car. This is just more, it's just built it's more, more on top. And, better. and how comfortable are these seats? They are pretty cool seats. But yeah, and they're super supportive too. <laughs> All right guys, right. I think the next thing you're gonna see us doing, actually, I think they need to hear this thing from the outside. Let's go and get some flybys and then we'll get onto the drag runs. Sure. See you in a sec. <laughs> So guys, we've got the draggy set up. We're gonna do a 60 to 120 while we're just off the main roads. Um, Strategy is gonna be basically traction off because it's cheating and full aggression, manual shifting. Yep, we can't, because it's got the KW coilovers, we can't adjust the suspension. So that's pretty stiff. Manual mode, I hope it can put some power down. I've got confidence. Uh, should we go 60 to 120 first? Yes. Yeah, all right. Oh, buddy. All right, let's head to this. Ready? Yep. Did we just break the two hundred thousand dollars CS? No, I just had a it had a hesitation. Try it again, eh? Okay. Jesus Christ! Two point six two. Bit of wheel spin. Holy mo That was wheel spinning more than I would have liked it to. It's got more in it. It's got more in it. Huh? Didn't. We're not doing it anymore. That's fast enough. No way. <laughs> okay. 2.54. Alright guys, we're going to try launch control. Um, the owner has launched it a couple of times, but not with any sort of science behind it. I don't know if it's gonna hook or not. Um, those 60 to 120 times are pretty damn impressive. We've got a good surface, tires are warm now, and we're gonna basically just launch it from the lowest RPM, it'll let us do it. Yeah, so as soon as the launch control comes up, I'll just pull the lever down to minimum, I guess. There was a bit of wheel spin. That's <laughs> quite a lot of wheel spin. Uh, 4.2 and the 60 to 120 on that run was 2.7. So it was actually the slowest 60 to 120. Interesting. It I, is baking a cake. Yeah, I thought the 60 to 120, I thought most of the wheel spin was gone from then, to be honest, but it, I guess it was still not as efficient as the manual ones. It uh, didn't feel very good. It, I mean, it felt okay, but I reckon... It's got too much power. Yeah. To, to launch with the DCT. And my car is gonna be really interesting to try and work out how to get my DCT to launch. <laughs> Yeah, not feeling confident after that. Especially Why? considering the size of the tyres on this thing. Yes. All right, should we try another one? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, try, I'll do this one full, just with me throttle. We, okay. My foot, no launch control mode. Um, Bit of brake boosting and go for it. Mega. All right, let's talk about what this thing has just done because 
it's quick. It's really, really quick. And it is a, it's an experience, that's for sure. Let's turn it off as well. Washer fluid is low. Okay, so 60 to 120s. Let's talk about those first, because this is wild for what it is, a stock turbo car. We did today, my God, we did a lot of runs. <laughs> it doesn't very quick. Okay, I'm gonna just put all the times up, but the, the fastest one that I can see right now is 2.49. I'd say on average, it was around 2.5, five to 2.6 if we averaged all the runs. Um, it's got so much more mid-range torque than my car. I think yep. it, it actually blows these tires off easier with the LSD than, than my car does with crappy tires that are an open diff. That's incredible. Um, and it, it really does. Like I'm, I wanna emphasize just how strong the power comes on. If you, if you have traction fully off, uh, you, you see why people crash these. Yes. Um, it just, it absolutely blows the tires off. Um, the 0-100s were not very good. Uh, in fact, slower than a stock M4 will do standard. But again, it's a, it's a power issue. So this car is faster 60 to 120 than Jimbo's M2 Comp. Yep. But it is slower than Jimbo's from a dig. And it's just to do with getting the power down off the line. This car's fastest validated run was 4.22. It did do another 4.24. And just to confirm, that is 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. I'll flash up the 0 to 60 time as well. And we're not using rollout. Look, it, it's friggin' quick. Yeah, that's still that's still really quick. It's, I mean, again, it's not as quick as your 17T car. That's when it was auto. Yeah, I don't think auto. my car would be this quick now. The the way the car tries to get off the line, the difference between a DCT and an automatic is really really interesting because it just doesn't have that torque converter that's already loaded up, already spinning. It's a it's a punch and it punches the rear tires. My biggest takeaway from it, and even that little drive I just had, the the way the chassis is set up is phenomenal. I feel like I'm sitting down and in this car. Like everything is focused at me with what you can feel through the steering wheel, the seat, like you can feel what that left rear wheel is doing through the seat so yeah. well. I've not had that on any other car. That's... Even going sideways, it doesn't scare you. Even though it's got so much power, it, it you just feel the car, the weight transfer, you feel the traction getting lost in the rear end. Man, this is a, this would, I'd love to have a drive one of these on a track. I think that's where it will really, I mean, don't get me wrong, it really felt amazing, especially along that B road, giving it a little bit of source. But I think when you're pushing it to 98, 99, 100%, it will just be in its element and everything will feel purposeful. Yeah. In fact, let's summarize it with that. Modified M4CS, it would be amazing around a circuit, not for the stuff that we do accelerating in a straight line. Kind of everything, I guess. No, but I kind of want this. And to, uh, to put that into perspective, this versus your car around a track, especially when you had your 6AT, which is when you were doing your quick 0 to 100s. It would destroy me. You know what this reminds me of a little bit? It's like the modern version of your modified M5. Oh, I didn't want to say that when I was driving it because I thought I'd sound like an idiot, but I'm glad you said that. Dave's car with the Sparco seats, yep. every, all the suspension that's set up in his car, the way the power comes on in that wow. is more like this power curve as well. Yeah, and, it, and it has, obviously this is just more than the M5, but even the, they must have similar wheel alignments because it sort of tr tram lines along the road similar. And then once you load up the steering wheel, <clears throat> it actually, it turns similarly. <laughs> really surprising. Okay, guys, we do need your help though, because Connor, although this isn't a drag car, Connor knows that. And that's why Connor hasn't gone to roll racing. But please comment below if you'd like to see this car at the next rolls, because I'd like to give him a run with a side-by-side -side race on the same surface at the same time in my car and really see which is quicker. Because I think it's going to be close. Yeah and uh, he needs some encouragement. So get in the comments, tell him to come and roll racing. It's because of your comments that he come up and did this video from the last time we featured this car, which was just a little snippet. So thank you all very much for interacting down below. I need to thank everyone that supports the channel, the members for YouTube, you guys Legends. are brilliant. You make such a difference to what? what we can do with the money that we get every month. Um, and everyone that buys the merch. In fact, we don't have our merch I've on got today. Skid Factory merch on today, which... We got up late after roll racing last night. Yeah. Anyway, and speaking of, let's go and get that video published. Yes, cool. All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.